Feminist, activist, nationalist, broadcaster and writer, Una Marson campaigned for women's rights and pan-Africanism, working in Jamaica and Britain from the early to the mid-20th century. She wrote columns, articles, manifestos, radio programs, poems and plays, edited and published journals, and she was the first black radio producer to be employed by the BBC. Martin was born in 1905 in the village of Sharon, Jamaica. She died in 1965 at the age of 60. After leaving school in Kingston, the capital of the island, Marson decided that she would become a writer to fight for social justice and equality and to share her belief that culture should be accessible to all. In 1923, when she was only 18, she produced a play, Susan Proudly. It was an adaptation of the best-selling novel by Herbert Delisser, a comedy drama about a working-class woman's struggle to make her way in patriarchal Jamaican society. At 21 years old, Martin became the first woman in Jamaica to be an editor and publisher, just one of the many firsts in her life. She co-founded the Cosmopolitan magazine. It was a monthly aimed at secretaries who were mostly women and the business youth of Jamaica. Martin was also a skillful poet and she wrote her activism into her poems at many different levels. Tropic Reveries in 1930 and Heights and Depths in 1931 were two volumes of poems with themes of love, nature and Jamaica itself. In 1932 she produced her play At What Price, staged at the Ward Theatre, Jamaica's most prestigious theatre. It picks up on the themes of Susan Proudly by calling for equality for Jamaican women in society. Marson left Jamaica to work in Britain. The first time was 1932 during the Global Great Depression. She lost in Peckham in South London at the home of her fellow countryman Harold Moody. He was a pioneering doctor who founded the League of Coloured Peoples, a civil rights organisation that promoted racial equality in Britain and anti-colonialism throughout the British Empire. The racism and sexism that she encountered in the UK transformed Marson's life and gave her activism a wider focus. She became editor of the League's influential magazine, The Keys, where she championed black feminism and she was a sought-after speaker for international women's rights. She also campaigned for pan-Africanism and independence from a colonial rule working with the many activists who were in 1930s Britain, such as Harold Moody, the Jamaican Pan-African advocate Marcus Garvey, and the Emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie. Marson was a major voice for establishing black theatre in Britain, where successful black actors and performers in the 1930s included cabaret superstar Leslie Hutch Hutchison, at the time the highest paid star in the country, Evelyn Dove, who was the first black singer to feature on BBC Radio, and American singer and box office star Paul Robeson. Marson made her own powerful statement by staging a new version of her play, At What Price, in 1933, with an all-black cast that included herself and Harold Moody. Marson returned to Jamaica in 1936 where as a journalist she reported on the impacts of the Great Depression. She was also an eyewitness to the social unrest of the labor revolt that created the political and trade union movements and laid the groundwork for Jamaica's independence. She worked with other pioneering women of Jamaica, such as Edna Manley, Gloria Escoffrey, and Amy Bailey, and she set up Jam Save, the Jamaica Save the Children charity. 1937 to 1938 was the peak of Marson's creativity. She published another volume of poetry, The Moth and the Star. Its poems are steel in velvet observations on Jamaican attitudes, particularly towards women, mirrored to her experiences of racism and sexism in London, which she picked up on in her 1945 collection, Towards the Star. She also staged two plays, London Calling, a comedy, and Pocomania, a drama. Both of them sharply observed wake-up calls for greater equality for women. 
Marson is regarded as a major playwright of the 20th century, and Pocamania has been hailed as among the most important Caribbean plays ever written, and credited with representing the birth of Jamaican national drama. Her plays, however, are rarely performed today. London Calling and Pocamania weren't published until 2016, 50 years after her death, and at what price remains unpublished. Marson returned to Britain in 1938 on the eve of the Second World War and the Blitz. This time, her journalist and activist skills were highly valued and she was asked to join the BBC World Service. She became the first black radio producer to be employed by the BBC. In 1941, she started work on the Calling the West Indies radio series and soon transformed it into Caribbean Voices which showcase Caribbean arts and culture. As the producer and presenter of this highly influential radio show broadcast through the West Indies, this is Una Marson introducing West Indians in Britain. Marson worked alongside literary giants like V.S. Naipaul from Trinidad and writers T.S. Eliot and George Orwell. Una Marson's achievements and legacy are finally being honoured today because of her commitment to social justice and her brilliance as a writer. In celebration of Marson as a playwright with links to both Jamaica and Britain, the Equal Stages Digital Theatre audio series has recorded an excerpt from her play London Calling. There will come a time, a poem written by Una Marson, for well, there will come a time when all the races of the earth, grown weary of the inner urge for gain, grown sick of all the fatness of themselves, and all the boasted prejudice and pride, will see this vision that now comes to me. Aye, there will come a time when every man will feel that other men are brethren unto him, when men will look into each other's hearts and souls and not upon their skin and brain, and difference in the customs of the race. Although I should live a hundred years or more, I should not see this time. But while I live, tis mine to share in this gigantic task of oneness for the world's humanity.